Hello everyone, here we are in chapter 12. We're going to start off this chapter with the counting principle. Okay, so our vocabulary today is based on events happening or um, kind of like probabilistic thinking, choices, possibilities. So we have a couple of props here for us to kind of think about those things. So outcomes. Outcome is what happens after like a single trial, a single event. So let's say I were to take this die and roll it around. Let's see, let me get my animation working. Yes. And then one of the possible outcomes that could happen, we know that there's six outcomes if I roll a six-sided die. One of the possible outcomes is that I get a one, a two, or three, or four, or five, whatever, right? Or six, right? So there's six possible outcomes. The sample space for the die would be six different things. So outcome refers to just one thing that happens after a trial. And the sample space refers to all the total possible outcomes. An event, however, can be considered, um, it could be like the outcome of a trial, but it could be the outcome of one or several trials. So an event could be a combination of things. Let's say I'm going to roll my die and, you know, choose amongst my favorite three shirts. That can be an event. What's the probability of me rolling five? And also, or, you know, how many ways can I roll five and choose a particular, um, a particular shirt? And then when we talk about probability, we'll talk about the probability of that. So an event can be one trial or a, a several, several trials. Now, the idea of independent events comes from literally, you know, events that don't have a necessary effect on one another. For instance, if I were to roll my die and then choose a shirt at random, that would be, um, those events are independent of each other. However, if I were to um, pick one shirt at random and then pick another one from the, from the pile, right, then that's not independent because what, I, what happens on the first pick will influence what happens on the second pick. So that brings us to the fundamental counting principle. And what the fundamental counting principle is, is this idea that, you guys are familiar with it, it's this idea that when you are counting successive um, kind of independent, well, successive events, you know that the number of choices from one event um, multiply the number of choices from the other event will give you the, the total possible of choices. What am I talking about? So there are four delicious flavors of ice cream and three types of toppings, right? And so the fundamental count, counting theorem will remind us that the total possible different choices, if we get one scoop of ice cream and one and choose just one topping, is it would be four times three different possibilities. Okay, so that's what our fundamental prin uh, principle of counting is, fundamental counting principle. I can speak, I promise. Okay, so dependent events. So we talked about independent events, right, where one thing doesn't impact the other. But now, when we have dependent events, obviously the events do impact each other. And the, the general way that we'll talk about it in, in our class would be choosing after a choice has already taken away some of the possibilities. So if we go back to our ice cream situation and I choose the lemon ice cream and somebody else has to choose from what's left, that will limit their choices. And therefore, what I choose, um, well, what they get to choose is dependent on what I choose. All right, let's go and get some practice on some examples. Here in example one, a sandwich chart offers customers a choice of a hamburger, chicken, or fish, or on a, or either, sorry, a plain or a sesame seed bun. How many different combinations of meat and bun are there? All right, and we, we pretty much get this. So just like we talked about before, you know that there's three choices and two choices, which is going to give us six possibilities. And those possibilities come from really just counting it out, right? Hamburger, you can have a hamburger. And sesame seed, that's one choice. You could have hamburger and plain, that's another choice. You can have chicken and sesame seed, that's yet another choice. Chicken and plain, another choice. Fish and sesame seed, you guys know where this is going. And fish and plain. And then you see we have six different choices.
So this next example too is very similar to example one where we're looking at um, somebody who has some choices to make. So the prize is Kim won a contest on a radio station. The prize was a restaurant gift certificate and tickets to a sporting event. She can select from one of three different restaurants and tickets to uh, one of obviously four football, basketball, baseball, basketball, baseball, or hockey. I said that out of order, but you guys are with me. How many different ways can she select a restaurant followed by a sporting event? And so that would be three different restaurants. Let's get that working. Times four different um, sports events, which gives us 12. So here we're looking at um, a similar situation, but we're talking about numbers. So answering machines, you guys don't even know what that is, but whatever. Many answering machines allow owners to call home and get their message by entering a three digit code. How many codes are possible? And so if we're talking about three digits, we think about all the possible digits that can go into each code. And we know that there are 10 digits from zero to nine. And so for each, um, number, right, each the first, second, and third number, right, for each number, there are 10 different choices. And therefore, since there's 10 different choices for each, it becomes 10 to the third power, 10 times 10 times 10, or 1000. So there's 1000 different possible codes that you could have for an answer machine. All right, so Charlita wants to take six different classes next year. Assuming that each class is offered each period, how many um, different schedules could she have so now this is a little bit different six different classes six different periods and six different classes are going to require us to kind of think about what the context of our situation is so if the first period choice right if she has six different classes that she can choose for first period that would be six but then for her second period choice she only has five more classes left does that make sense and then for her third period choice, you guys are seeing it, four classes, then three, then two, then one. So when we are choosing, when we have dependent events, sorry about that, when we have dependent events such that what a choice will affect the number of possible outcomes the next time, we're going to have this kind of a descending order thing, six times, five times, four times, three times, two times, one, which we know can be written as six factorial. So six factorial, what is that, 720, I think? So in this circumstance, she would have 720 different possible, um, possible class choices. So that's it for this video. I hope that the um, assignment makes sense, and I look forward to seeing, talking to you guys soon. Let me know if there's any questions.